I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike. Welcome to my workshop. I'm here today with Michelin and we are going to be talking about Bib Moose. Now the Bib Moose was originally designed back in 1983 for the infamous Dakar rally and it has become a very tried and tested and reliable option for off-road motorcycle riding. It's used in motocross, enduro, rally, desert racing and today we're going to be looking at exactly what that offering gives you. So here is a Bib Moose. Now a lot of people wonder what it's even made of. So this is a closed cell nitrogen filled foam. Now it sounds really technical but there are a few key reasons why this is so good inside an off-road motorcycle tyre. The first one of that it is non-absorbent which means it's not going to suck in moisture from the environment that helps it be super lightweight and main thing for me is the reliability. It cannot be punctured, and if you damage it here, the integrity of the, of the rest of the foam is all good. Now, I have been running a moose in my motorcycle for off-road riding for quite a few years now. That comes from hard enduro, such as Romaniacs, through to riding around uh, races in the UK, desert rallies in Tunisia and Africa. And I think the main reason why I opt for it is that it is reliable, it's durable, and it's never gonna let me down. Now, when I'm out there riding in an extreme, maybe in a race, I do not wanna be getting a puncture. The idea of having to get tools out on the side of the track or pull out of a race because my tires have failed me is just not something I enjoy doing. But with a moose, that's never going to happen. When you look around the world as well at some of the top podiums, so many of the pros are relying on the moose as well. And that comes down to that durability. There is a myth though that a moose is really hard to change. I actually think it's easier than a tube. And that is why it's always in my off-road motorcycles. So now I'm gonna show you how to take it off, how to put it back on, and the process of getting the bib moose sorted. Starting out with a nice clean tire, first of all, undo your rim lock using the correct toolage and then break the bead all the way around the surface of the tyre. You're going to want to be careful not to damage the tyre wall and you're going to want to do this on both sides of the tyre. Lubrication is going to really make this task a little bit easier. There's lots of tyre changing lubricants on the market. You can also use a mild soapy water or in this example I'm actually just using plain water. Now it's time to grab your first tyre lever. Now I recommend using between three and five tyre levers. The more levers you have, the easier it's going to be. But using the bead breaker, you're going to apply enough force just to slide in that tyre lever. Then working your way around three to four inches apart, get more tyre levers in. Then using my knees to hold the tyre still, I'm going to start in the middle levers and pull them towards me, releasing the bead from the rim. It's time to then use one lever and the bead breaker and slowly work your way around, applying just enough force of the bead breaker to give you space for a lever and chunk by chunk, pulling the tire off the rim. Now you're going to flip the tire over and it's time again to use your bead breaker with a little bit of force, gentle not to damage the tire wall and one lever just to pull the tire slightly away to enable you to push it down. Work your way around, spinning the tire and the rim. Now it's time to inspect your rim, making sure that your rim tape is intact, checking for any damage, any sharp objects, and of course cleaning any dirt, debris, slime, and old lubricant. Doing the same with your tire. Uh, a slight warning is that the removal of your mousse can be a little bit messy. We recommend that you do this quite regularly, not just when you need a new tire. Getting the moose out, I always use my body weight to push onto the top of the tire. This opens up the carcass on the ground side and using a tire lever, I can scoop it in and pull the moose out. Working my way around, again, putting my body weight onto the tire and pulling the moose until it's free of the tire. It's now time to inspect the tire and the moose. This cleaning process is both for the longevity of the life of your moose, but also a time to make sure that there's no damage. Then it's time for the lubricant. Now the lubricant is a really important part of this process. Not only does the lubricant help keep your moose cool when you are running and using it, that also means that the longevity of your moose is going to be maximised and prolong the life of it. Now every single one of Michelin bib mooses comes with a tube of lube. 
The tube of lube is sufficient for a larger rear tire, use it all. On the front tire, you won't necessarily need to use the whole of that lube. A tip from me is using the tube to pour it inside the tire and then getting yourself a clean paintbrush and using the paintbrush to spread it out inside. Using your body weight, again, open the carcass and push the mousse into the wall of the tire, working your way around until the whole mousse is installed. What you don't want to do is get any of the lubricant onto the wall of your tire. There is a difference between tire fitting lubricant that is designed to evaporate and disappear and mousse lubricant, which is designed to stay wet and slick. Check which way your tire is going to be spinning. There is always going to be a directional arrow on your Michelin tire and you can work out which way your wheel is going to be spinning for correct installation. Engage the tire with the rim lock. I always use my knee to then hold it in place while I grab my tire levers. And I can start to use my levers to pull that first side of the bead back onto the rim. Small chunks make this a lot more manageable. The bigger the chunks, the more force you're going to need and more force will risk damaging your tire. Once it's engaged, use your body weight to push down and engage the full tire onto the rim. When it's on correctly, you will not be able to see your mousse. Time for some more lubricant. Again, I'm using water. The first lever is being positioned right above my rim lock and lock it off onto your tire lever. Then using more tie levers, work your way around the tire, starting with slightly larger chunks as it's easier to begin with and working to smaller chunks. Now what you'll notice here is I've actually inserted two tire levers at the 10 and two o'clock opposite to the rim lock. These tire levers are in the removal angle. They are going to help create more space once I've got to the final six inches, I'm then going to put pressure on my rim lock. The rim lock is then going to give space between the rim lock and the rim while I use my bead breaker to apply gentle force onto the tire and that last little bit of bead should pop in place. Well worth getting yourself a cloth and cleaning up any of the excess dirt, any lubricant that has been left. And again, at this time, you're going to be checking your installation. Your tyre does have a fitting line running all the way around so you can easily check if it's seated well. If your tyre isn't seated well it's going to cause vibration and feedback as you're riding along so the extra moments now to get it seated correctly are going to be worth it. Now first of all you can use your bead breaker to apply some force around the edge of the rim. That is likely to help the tyre pop onto the rim more evenly and give you that correct fitting. You can also try bouncing the tire on the ground. That will apply some force and encourage your rim to sit a little bit more easily. Or finally, it's also possible to use a little bit of air pressure. So I've got my compressor line here. It is possible to leave a inner tube valve in there or to simply push the nozzle of your air compressor onto the edge of the rim and you can apply up to 50 PSI of air into your tire wall. Last step is going to be tightening up your rim lock, making sure everything's happy with your tire. It's always worth giving it one last inspection and then you can get it back on your bike and go ride. So there we have bib mousse and tire installed and I didn't even break a sweat. Hopefully this video has made you realize it's actually all down to technique and not brute force. I recommend you get out there, have a go, get practicing and fingers crossed this video will help make your tire changing with bib mousse a lot easier. The killer question, how long is a bib mousse gonna last? Now that is kind of like thinking about how long is a piece of string. The speed and the terrain of the riding that you're gonna be doing with your bib mousse is gonna be quite key to the longevity. So things that you wanna be avoiding is sustained high speed on compact surfaces. With it being a mousse, the friction inside the tire creates heat and that is something that you want to be avoiding but also massively whether you are doing the correct maintenance of your mousse. So the cleaning process is actually really important. Now we talked about it as we did a tire change, but you really want to be looking at making sure that you're taking your tire off, getting rid of the moisture, the fluid, the grit, the sand that has got inside the carcass of the tire and making sure that there's lots of gel to help keep the friction, which creates heat 
which the moose doesn't like, down. Storage of your motorcycle is well worth thinking about. It's always recommended that you keep your bike off the ground. Now, with it being a foam inside, prolonged pressure with the weight of the bike is going to impact that moose. So just store it off the ground and you'll get rid of that concern. We then have tire compatibility. Michelin are the original creators of bib moose and so they've been optimized to go into the internal tire spaces of a Michelin tire, so just bear that in mind. The sustainable side of running mooses is something that I particularly favor. Now, not only are you not gonna get a puncture because it's puncture proof, that means you're not gonna be getting through a load of mooses. I did a race once where a buddy used seven inner tubes and I used one moose. So not only was that a lot of time faff changing tires, also for my pocket, I was saving quite a lot of money. So we've gone through a whole load of things, history, maintenance, fitting of bib moose. Hopefully this video has been interesting and informative for you. Please do let us know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm Vanessa Ruck here in my workshop with Michelin. Thanks so much for watching.